Hey folks, in this video I'm going to continue working on this platformer in Pygame. So last time I got as far as creating this grid for the world map and kind of explaining how the tiles are arranged and how this whole thing works. So what I want to work on now is to actually add in the player and add in some control so you can run around and jump and add in some gravity. I'm not going to add in collision just yet, but uh, I'll, I'll add inside in the basic controls for him to start with. So uh, first of all, I'll just go straight into here where I've got my world class and I'll just create another class for the player. So I'll say class, player, and then as always start off with the constructor, which is your init function. And the arguments it's going to take is the x and the y coordinate. So just as I did with the world, I want to load in an image and create a rectangle from it. So my image is going to be just the same function as I've used before, pygame.image.load. And this is in the image folder and very creatively named guy1.png. So that will load the image for me. Uh, and now I can assign it to myself.image. So this will assign it to the player instance when I eventually create it. Now, of course, I need to scale it again, but it's not going to be using the tile sizes because it's not, a, it's not exactly the same size as the tiles. So for this, I've already created or I've already chosen sizes what I used in my original game. So I'll say pygame.transform.scale. Uh, the image I want to scale is that img, and the coordinates are 40 on the x and 80 on the y. So he's double... The, or so it's twice as tall as he is wide. So with that created, I can now create a rectangle from it. So self.rect equals self.image.getRect. And remember, the same as the tiles, this essentially just takes a rectangle from the outline of this image. So the rectangle is going to be 40 by 80 pixels uh, width and height. Now I can give it a coordinate. So self.rect.x is going to be the x argument and self.rect.y uh, is going to be the y argument. So that'll be enough to actually create the player for me. So I can go ahead now, I've got this class here, I can go ahead and create an instance of it. So where I've got my world, I'll just say player equals, and this is an instance of the player class. Coordinates are going to be 100 on x, and for the y, because of the bottom of the screen, I can say screen height minus, uh, now he's, so the tiles are 50 pixels tall, and then the player himself is 80 pixels tall, so that's 130 total. So this is just going to put him directly on top of one of the tiles. Uh, so this won't draw anything on the screen yet, but I'm just going to run it to make sure there's no errors. Okay, all fine. So you can't see it, but in the background, uh, an instance of the player class has been created. So I can just come back into here and add a new method, which will be update. So it just takes a self argument. And all I want for the time being is just draw player onto screen. So again, for this, I use the blit function. So I call screen, which is my display window, dot blit. The image is self.image, and the coordinates are self.rect. So that's going to draw it on. I just need to call this function within my game loop. So let's come in here, and underneath where I've got all the world being drawn, I can say player.update, and run that. And there we go. I've got the player here. Of course, there's no moving at the moment, but it's, uh, it's starting to come together. Actually, I'm going to hide these grid lines. I don't really need them anymore. So let's get rid of that, and I'll get rid of this uh, draw grid function up here. Okay, so now I want to add in some controls for the player. And this is quite straightforward. It's more or less the same as what I've done before. If I come back down into this game loop, I've got my event handler where I'm just looking for events from Pygame. Well, I'm not just going to be looking for any key presses. So let's do this before I draw the player, because I want to move him around first, change his coordinates, and then I want to draw the updated coordinates onto the screen. So first of all, let's say get key presses. And uh, this is just done with another pygame function. So I assign the keys to this key variable, and this will be pygame.key.get underscore pressed. So this is going to get the keys that have been pressed within the game, and then I can look for specific ones. So first, I'll just start off simple with left and right. If key square brackets pygame dot k underscore left. So remember, this is kind of just a shorthand. Uh, I could just say equals true, but I can leave that out and it's implied as the same thing. So if I press the left key, then I want to move my rectangle to the left. So I could just say self dot rect dot x equals decrease by five pixels. However, the way that this platformer is going to work with the collision is first of all, uh, well, typically what you would do normally is you would move the, 
move your object and then check for collision and see if it's collided and then act based on that. But that's not really going to work here because then I will have moved the player and you will see that there's an overlap. You will have collided with one of the tiles already by the time I've detected it. So the collision detection has to be a bit more proactive. So the steps instead are calculate new uh, player position, check collision at new position, and then adjust player position. So what this basically means is that I first of all work out where he's going to be based on either left or right arrow keys. And then I check whether at that point he will have a collision. So whether he can actually move there or not, if there's something in the way. And if he can't move there, then we don't move him. So this just basically means it's a little bit more proactive and we look ahead to whether moving would result in a collision or not. And if it would, then we take the actions up front. So rather than moving the rectangle straight away, I'm instead going to have a delta x and a delta y. So I'll define these variables up here first of all. So dx is 0 and dy is 0. And what these basically mean is, is change. So when I press the left key, I just want my dx coordinate or dx variable to be decreased by 5. Because I'm moving left, so the x coordinate decreases. And now I can do the same thing for moving right. But now it's going to be increasing. So normally the next step here would be to check for collision at these new coordinates or at these new proposed coordinates. But for the time being, I'm skipping that step out. I'm just going to add a comment for it. Check for collision. And then I'm going to say update player coordinates. So I'm just going to assume that no collision has happened. And this is where I'm going to update the rectangle. So self.rec.x is increased by delta x and self.rec.y is increased by delta y. So now let's try this. Of course, I haven't actually got anything for changing delta y yet, only delta x. So let's run this code and I can move them around. So you can see now I'm holding left and right and the player is moving. Of course, there's no collision. He's just sliding through everything, but the movement's working and it's nice and smooth. So the next thing I want to add is being able to jump. So that again is quite straightforward. I'll just copy this line here and add it above, except this time I'm looking for the space key being pressed. So if the space key has been pressed, then I want the player to jump up the way. And when he's jumping, essentially that means that he's going to have a Y velocity. So it's not going to be exactly the same as delta Y because he's going to be jumping at a, initially at a higher speed and then gravity is going to pull him back down. So if I was to use a delta Y value, the jumping would not seem very smooth. It would be kind of an instant jump. So instead, I need to define a new instance variable. And this is going to be self dot. Uh, vel underscore y, which is y velocity. So I'll start it off at zero, but then every time you press the space key, self dot vel underscore y becomes negative 15. So it jumps off with negative 15 pixels. Remember, uh, the y coordinate is increasing from zero at the top to the maximum at the bottom of the screen. So negative actually moves the player up the way, positive moves you down the way. So this is going to move him up if I, if I jump. Of course, at the moment, this variable isn't being used for anything so that's what I need to add in now so the same as what I've got here uh, I've got my self rect x plus the delta x and y plus delta y well I haven't got a delta y defined uh, however I can now do that here so dy uh, equals or rather plus equals self dot val underscore y so my delta y is constantly going to be increasing by this jump uh, by this number uh, when I jump. So let's try this now, and I'll press space. And as long as I well, I don't even need to hold it. The player just keeps going up because there's no gravity. He's just going to keep jumping and keep flying up the way. So let's add in some gravity then above this. Add gravity, and this is going to be quite straightforward. So basically. Gravity is an acceleration, right? So it just means that this y velocity is constantly going to be increasing every iteration. Uh, because he's, it's pulling him down the way, that means the y coordinate needs to be positive. So the y velocity is increasing as well. So all I do is say self.val underscore y is increased by one every iteration. You can change this value to whatever you want. That's going to control the speed at which gravity affects him. But I don't really want that to infinitely keep going higher and higher. So we'll just set a limit on it. This is kind of his terminal velocity. So if it exceeds 10, then let's just set it to 10. Basically, it means that it will never go past the value of 10. 
I'll try again. And the player just falls straight off the screen. If I hold X, he comes flying back up. Of course, there's no collision, so this isn't going to work that well. He's just going to keep falling through until I press space. But the problem is, I can keep holding space, and he just keeps flying up. Uh, I kind of need to address that now. And that's quite straightforward. I can just add a trigger in here that will stop him from uh, continuing to press space. So let's add a new variable. This is going to be self dot jumped equals false. So it's going to start off as a false value. And then I can add this additional check in here. So if I've pressed space and self dot jumped is false, so it means that I haven't jumped yet. Well, as soon as I do jump, let's set it to, to true. So self dot jumped is now true. Of course, now I need a way of setting it back to false. So I just copy this because it's only going to be false when I've released the space bar. Essentially, I don't want to be able to hold space and keep jumping. I want it to be that every time I press space, only then does he actually jump again. So self dot jumped now becomes false. Now, I think if I run this, he's just going to fall off the screen completely. So I'll try this and I'll try. There we go. Yeah, I can't, I can't hit space fast enough to bring him back up onto the screen. I think I need to add a temporary limit to stop him falling off the bottom of the screen. Yeah, what I could do is just add a temporary check, and I'll delete this straight after. Uh, I'll just say if self.rect on bottom. So if the bottom of the player has gone off uh, screen height. So if he's gone off the bottom of the screen, then let's position him to be self.rect.bottom equals screen height. So he's not going to go off the screen anymore. And at the same time, just set his dy to zero so he doesn't just keep falling. So let's try this now. Ooh, let's uh, typo there. Try that again. Okay, yeah. So, well, obviously that's not quite right because he's not standing on a tile, but he's not falling off the bottom of the screen anymore. So I can now jump, uh, but I was only able to jump once. Oh yeah, I think I was going a bit too quick earlier. Uh, what I need to do here is check for when I am not jump, not pressing the space key. So if the space space key is pressed and self jump is false then we set jump to true but if the space key is released then we set it back to false so if i run this again should no i still can only jump once and it looks like i've just made a typo here as well i sometimes get these equals mixed up when you're checking for an if statement you've got to use two of them but when you're just setting to something you set one and sometimes get these two mixed up so now I can keep jumping. Okay, there we go. Uh, of course, the problem is I can still keep jumping infinitely because all it's checking is that I'm not pressing or I'm not holding the space bar. But if I release it and just keep uh, spamming it, I can keep jumping. So that's something I can add in quite easily. Basically, I'm just going to be checking whether or not I'm standing on top of a block at the time. And that's going to come in with the collision control. So I'm not going to do collision just now. I'll do that in a separate video and I'll kind of fill in this section that I've added in as a comment just now. So if you found this useful, uh, then please do leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with these, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.